Okay, the third and final Q&A session by the Maria Misericordia TV, Divine Messengers Q&A. I've cut out a couple of questions that were not relevant or repeated in other questions we've already had. So that's why this video is a bit shorter than the actual video. Let's begin then. Fray Luciano, how is the Grace Mercy Order composed? The Grace Mercy Order is composed by six branches or expressions Six of consecrated branches. life, whether monastic or civil. Each one of them was requested and guided by the sacred it's hearts like throughout more the complicated than Opus Dei each or the neocomchumenical way by the sacred hearts. The branches. This has caused obedience to the divine will daily received through the sacred hearts to become our greatest aspiration and our reason to exist seeking through service to express yep. our humility okay. and gratitude okay. for tirelessly serving okay. God. Okay. They have taught us something very important, which has become a motto within our work, which is to do what we ask for and not to do what we are not asked for. So now he's going to tell us about the, the six branches, branch, which is a male the male branch, branch the number branch one. Of the daughters of the Christic charity, Unusual word. The Second branch. Sons of the advent of Christ, the consecrated sons. Christ, Third branch. The priestly branch. A priestly branch. I thought we had priests. Then there is the branch of the devotees. Then the devotees. The consecrated daughters. The devoted daughters to the devoted. Of Jesus, the female ones, and the, and the male devoted. Sons, devoted to the quite a hierarchy. Quite an unusual. It's not like and they've got the look, branches, it's not like they've got a religious men religious women Christ, they've got like female, two female, religious men orders two religious the female the orders Jesus, and then they've got female. secular branches male and female the next is to interesting de Jesus. sister who consecrates you well it's not the bishop After the virgin mary led us in the first consecration the virgin mary led them she named the first members of what she called the council so of our lady guidance, kind of appointed of the bishops or and whatever the, task of the council of order, so the, the council messages, which includes that guy lucian okay oh, say lucian is the guy that the consecrates the, the women okay the and our lady asked for that services to God, they may live the aspiration of converting themselves into instruments of Christ Jesus. And which are the vows that you take as consecrated people? The consecrated kind of standard vows, vows of austerity. austerity. I wonder what that means in real life. Vows for the whole order. As is, is it poverty maybe? Our consecration, we take on some other vows. The civil consecrated are they going to tell us some? Oh, these are the civil consecrated. I wonder what they're like, because these ones we're looking at are not civil consecrated. These are religious. Hmm. Okay. It was the Virgin Mary who little by little taught us what it meant to be a priest of Christ. She gradually prepared a path for our souls, for them to open and get ready. So that one day her son might consecrate the first twelve priests so of the Grace Mercy. They were he wasn't ordained by the most a bishop. Also us but to our Lord. I think that's like Joseph Smith, wasn't Joseph Smith Smith? Didn't he come claim to be ordained by our Lord or something? Something similar. So in this perfect unity that is established when we sincerely surrender to him, our Lord may be with his children of the world in each ceremony. I wonder if she's Polish, this girl that's speaking. She also taught us that a true Maybe someone in the audience will be able to tell me better. Just a pronunciation. The devoted souls can travel the path towards God. She taught us that knowledge is one of the schools of a priest and the other school is love. It's just kind of the stuff that makes them sound Catholic, you know? Towards the fellow being. Yeah. It is there where Christ can it sounds very Catholic, but world. he's been ordained by our Lord himself outside of the Catholic prayer. Church. Here we go. The answer is given directly once again. The first consecration happened at the request of Jesus Christ. The priests are ordained as a request of Jesus Christ. From that moment on, but it sounds like it sounds like there's an instrument involved. Maybe it's this guy. Under his guidance, and he 
ca be carried out in his presence by a male member of the Council of Permanent Guidance. Oh, so this the guy does it, basically. The consecration is officiated. So they the don't just kind of stand there the and just say, oh, Jesus has done it. No, this guy does it. Okay. But of course, he was chosen by our Lord. Who him himself summoned to priesthood. Praelius, what is your belief okay. about the Holy Eucharist? We believe that the living body and blood of Christ are present in the Eucharist, where the perfect love of God expresses itself. The Eucharist allows us to be in spiritual union with our Redeemer, and through Him, with our Eternal Father. It sounds Catholic, but there's no mention of sacrifice. A Lutheran could say this, or a Mormon could say this, about their view of communion. You know, be careful. It's not a Catholic view. No mention of sacrifice of the Mass. The priests of the Grace Mercy Order, after they are consecrated as priests, under the authority and request of Christ of course. Jesus, officiate the sacrament of the Eucharist. So once that other guy, Lucian, has laid his hands on you, you can then do the Eucharist in their religion, which is just a real presence miracle. It's not a sacrifice, but of course it's not a real present. And see that one there? They've got a different set of sacraments from us. No marriage, no confirmation, and foot washing is now a sacrament. The definition of sacrament is kind of from the Catechism, and he's deliberately done that. You know, sacraments as efficacious signs that affect what they signify. It's a, it's a Catholic definition they've deliberately picked up. But what does foot washing affect by what it signifies, I wonder? Let's see. Oh, our Lord is telling them what programs to produce. In a series entitled Sacred Sacraments, the Order presented many messages that he has transmitted about this theme. So our Lord has given us new instructions about the sacraments. So he wasn't happy with how the Catholic Church been doing it for 2,000 years. So that people may receive the grace of being I bet of they God. do repeated baptism. And of course, of their Christ baptism wouldn't be valid if you're not already baptized. Grace, Remember that. Which purifies and renews life. Because they don't believe in God as we understand Almighty God. The sacrament of reconciliation and penance or confession. Through trust and mercy, souls receive forgiveness from their faults. And they are held to stand up. Again, that's, that's a Catholic understanding of confession there. Christ with love and compassion to the repentance of his children and through his authority absolve faults by means of his divine mercy making it sound like it's Catholic well that's actually not the Catholic understanding of anointing of the sick he's not mentioned about temporal punishment and he's not talking about the effects of sin here's their extra sacrament it sounds like foot washing is like a super confession. Like maybe really bad sins. You can't just say it in confession. You've got to get your socks off. One last question. Someone has obviously asked about this because it just sounds weird, doesn't it? Celestial Church. The Celestial Church is the gathering of all blessed souls and angels of God. So is that heaven? The science of the celestial church. The science of the celestial church. Love, which is part of the divine experience of all blessed beings. Entering the celestial church of Christ is possible when the praying being adores praying the sacred God of Jesus by means of the blessed sacrament. And by means of this perfect It's kind of wordy the and strange. Thus, they renew their faith and trust in the divine. So what is the celestial church then? He didn't really tell us. He told us something about the life of the blessed. He didn't talk about heaven though, did he? And then he spoke about on earth entering this celestial church. The Mormons talk about something similar, don't they? They have celestial marriage. There are similarities. The more of these videos I watch, the more similar it seems to Mormonism, especially this council leaders council kind of thing they have sounds a bit mormon also mormonism let's not forget has a real gnostic side to it 
is this a kind of Catholic Mormonism? They also, the Mormons have strange beliefs about other planets. Is it a kind of Catholic Mormonism? Maybe it is. Anyway, these are the three videos they produce so far, Q and A. I hope it's helped you to understand how this group is not a Catholic group. It's outside of the Catholic Church. They claim to be priests by the authority of Jesus Christ, telling one guy you're going to be the one to ordain a new batch of priests. They don't believe the same as us about the Blessed Sacrament, in that they don't believe that Mass is a sacrifice. They don't believe that our Lord has guided the Catholic Church for 2,000 years. They believe that, that the Catholic Church has obviously got it completely wrong. Or they believe in new public revelation happening that completely overrides everything our lord has taught for the last 2000 years again like mormonism you know my guess is this is the devil up to his usual activity may almighty god bless you may our lady intercede for you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen